Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. This is Kit and today's video is one that people have been asking for a while. If you didn't know, I picked up a boat about a month ago and people have been asking me to do like a walkthrough or introduction to my boat. I'm finally getting around to it. I've owned it for about a month now. It is towards the end of September and I think I got a pretty good idea of uh, how the boat is. So the boat is an Alumacraft 185 tiller, competitor tiller. So what that means is there's no steering wheel, there's no console up here. So normally it'd be right there. But if you can see, I'm sitting back here. This is the tiller. This is how you steer the boat. Uh, not everybody knows that. <laughs> I guess if you're not into tiller boats, you really don't know what it is. Yeah, so I put in the order back in April. Uh, when I ordered it from the dealer, I was talking to them, uh, I was looking at a 17 and a half foot and I knew I wanted a tiller back then. So anyways, after talking to the dealer for a little while, you know, they told me that 2023's, this was back in April, were all spoken for. So he tells me if I move up to an 18 and a half foot, I could get a 2023 boat and I would get it sooner versus waiting for a 2024 model 17 and a half footer. I think they were talking about August. So at that time, I was like, okay, I'm not married to a 17 and a half footer. I will jump up to the bigger size. And people always say, uh, you'll appreciate the bigger size because there's more space. That is what I decided to go with. I had to go on the website, build the boat. I picked uh, all black, black on black, 18 and a half foot, 90 horsepower Mercury, because that's the biggest power plant for this boat. If I had a side console, you know, the steering wheel, I could go up to a 150. I think, yeah, I think 150 is the biggest for the 185. And then I told the guy I wanted no carpet, so all vinyl. Uh, the thing with carpet is I'm gonna, I'm just gonna be fishing, so there's gonna be slime, blood, guts. You know, I don't want that stuff getting in the carpet and then having to clean it out. I, I did not want to mess with it. So after all that, I put in my order, and I, the original you know estimate date for the boat was like june so this was back in april mind you now we fast forward may yeah i think it was may so one month later i emailed the dealer hey you know just checking in see what's going on then he told me he didn't realize i meant like all vinyl like on the whole boat like if you look at the whole the deck and all this stuff he didn't realize that's what i meant he thought i just meant this part whatever this part is i forgot what it's called so he said, well, since those are like kind of custom made, it's going to take a little bit longer. Pushed it back a couple weeks or something. I said, yeah, that's fine. You know, it's what I want. So I'm, I, I can wait for what I want. I think a couple weeks go by, you know, it's getting closer to June. There was a big storm. A tree fell on my truck. So that set me back financially and uh, transportation wise. So I didn't have a truck anymore. And I was like, man, this is going to set back the boat. Ended up emailing the dealer, see what was going on with the boat with another update. He's like, oh, they're kind of behind on production. So it's going to be a little bit longer, probably. He started talking in July and I told him, well, that works out fine with me because a tree just fell on my truck and I got to take all that stuff situated before I even think about getting a boat. So it worked out. It worked out. Anyways, fast forward to July. I email them again. Hey, you know, what's what's going on? I'm trying to look for an update. <laughs> They're behind schedule again, you know, production issues or uh, what was it? The supply chain, I'm guessing, had something to do with it. A boat with carpet and a different color, I could have gotten it sooner, but I told them, no, 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 no. I want the all black, all vinyl, you know, I'll, I'll wait for it. It's, it's what I want, you know. I'm, I didn't want to settle because I know I would have regretted it. Anywho, Fast forward to like closer to August, <laughs> I email him again. Hey, what's going on? Blah, blah, just trying to look for an update. And he tells me uh, they should be starting the build soon. So at this point, I want to say late July, maybe early August, they haven't started the build yet. And at this time, I was like, okay, I'm starting to get antsy. I've been patient this whole time. I was like, okay, I mean, there's, there's nothing I could have done about it anyway. So another couple weeks goes by, I email him again. And this time he actually got me more, more concrete news that they, he thought that they started the build uh, that week. 
thankfully they're you know something different other than oh maybe at the end of the month or next month or whatever so another couple weeks goes by I email them I think it was on a Monday or Sunday or Monday and I was like hey you know it's been a couple weeks what's going on and he told me oh the boat came in Friday I was like oh oh I was like well I guess that's good to know uh, granted it wasn't ready for me to pick up anyways because they still had to get it prepped and all that stuff I already had at this point since I was anticipating the boat coming in at some point I'd picked up a trolling motor lithium iron phosphate batteries uh, another Garmin in anticipation for the boat I didn't want to order that stuff through the dealer because I wanted to save some money so I ended up waiting for some sales and whatnot anyways you know I guess we'll get started with the tour we'll start in the back so like I said this is the 90 horsepower mercury tiller it is a four stroke the biggest motor for this boat is a 90 horsepower on the tiller so moving around to this side right next to me is the live well I forgot how big it is but I got some bait in there I, I netted some bait before I came around the corner to do this intro segment I want to say it's like 18 gallons I'm not sure I'll have to throw it up I'm sorry guys tons of storage on this boat and then right here we got this is the battery compartment uh, I got the cranking battery so all my electronics there they got their own batteries I didn't want anything messing with the cranking battery you know I didn't want my fish finder or trolling motor draining this battery and then stranding myself because I mean it's possible I'm pretty sure it's happened to people so yeah this battery is only for the gas motor and the uh, auxiliary stuff so this stuff and then I don't know I could store stuff in there I've been throwing my I've been throwing my life jacket in there I don't know why I haven't been because it's right here down in front of me is the command console you know you got your odometer no you got your speedometer and tachometer right for the RPMs so you got all your auxiliary switches, master power, nav, courtesy lights, accessory, bilge, aerator, horn. Then I got these drawers. I just been throwing, you know, my keys, uh, sunblock, sunglasses, or bug spray, sunblock. Down here, my Jurassic plastics drawer. Keep my baits in there. And then here, this little thing tucks away in here. I'll take my fish finder off and I could store everything in there and lock it so the nice thing about that is if I'm out somewhere and I want to put all this stuff away I don't want this stuff sitting out while you know I'm either at work or at home because this boat does not fit in my garage I thought it would but it doesn't anyways so I can put stuff in there lock it away the live scope pole fits in there the screen fits in there and uh, a bunch of these cables then in here I got a Rory Pow lithium iron phosphate battery in there. It is a 30 amp. Uh, I bought it off Amazon. It was on sale, so it was cheap. It was relatively cheap, I should say. The reason why I went with that battery is because you know those the big name brands, they're nice and stuff. I don't know, it's it's kind of hard to pay that much money. I mean, I'm pretty sure they got great customer service and good warranties I mean the warranty for this isn't bad I have to look it up what it is but I think it's comparable to one of the big brands and that battery pro probably costs half of what you would pay for a big branded one so nothing is the big brands it's just you know if you want to save a little money I'll put a link in the description below my Amazon link so you can save yourself some money too and so far it hasn't let me down other than the fact that I let it drain all the way and this isn't a knock on this battery in particular, but lithium iron phosphate batteries, they have a battery management system. And if it drops below a certain voltage, like if you drain it down completely, the battery goes to sleep and you have to wake it up. Depending on your charger, it might not charge it. So luckily I had three different chargers, threw them all on there, only one of them would charge it. But there's other ways to wake up a sleeping battery. So down here, I have my Summit Shuttle. So I use this thing for ice fishing. Uh, I knew I wanted two screens on here, but I wasn't sure if I wanted it hard mounted because uh, if I have people in the boat or if I'm moving around in the boat, I can just pick this up, move it around anywhere on the boat. So when it's just me or when we're cruising from spot to spot, I have the maps over here 
then I'll have the sonar, you know, live scope or 2D on this screen. And then whenever we stop to fish, whoever's with me, they can move this, this other shuttle around wherever they want. So it works out pretty good and it's heavy enough where if I'm going full speed, it doesn't bounce around or anything like that. The only problem is, you know, I got to connect these two units uh, physically every time which isn't a huge deal, but it, it, it's something to know. It, it might be a little annoying for some people, but it's been working out for me pretty good. Okay, so next compartment here. This boat comes with a cooler. So I got a sandwich and a drink in there, but it's been pretty handy. Uh, I haven't thrown too much drinks or ice or anything like that in there, but from just keeping my stuff in there regularly, it stays pretty cool. All right, next compartment. What do I got in here? Uh, this one's kind of a skinnier compartment. Yeah, I got my rod holders in here. So I got some Scotty rod holders. And then my fire extinguisher is in here too. So as far as rod holders go, so Alumacraft has these uh, mounting brackets. Here, I'll show you guys back here. So Alumacraft has these things. This mounting bracket here. Uh, it's kind of like plastic. I mean, it is straight up plastic. Uh, it works fine, but I don't like how it sits sideways like that. And there's only one bolt to secure it. I guess the new ones, they, they upgraded it to aluminum. And there's two, there's two of these nuts. But I didn't get any. So that's just something to know. So that's why I ended up going with these Brocraft mounts. So they're made of aluminum. You see down here, they got two bolts. And look at this thing. That thing is sturdy. And I like how it mounts on top. And you can mount a bunch of other stuff on here. So on my live scope pole, I got the Ram ball mounted up here. It, it's already pre-drilled with these holes up here. And if you need any other holes, you can just, you know, drill them yourself. So yeah, I, I really like these. You know, I'll link these also. They're on Amazon. I think they make them for other boats too. So if you're looking for something a little bit more sturdy, I'd recommend these. Links down below. Move on to this next compartment. So in here, another dry storage. I got some dielectric grease in this YOLO tech thing. That's my camera mount up there for the boat. Talk about that in a little bit. Got a cast net, little tackle bag for catfish stuff, uh, fish grips. So on a lot of these you can lock them. So this one you can lock, that one you can lock, that one you can lock. I'd say about half of them you can lock. You lock that one too. Up to the next compartment. Tons of compartments in this boat. This is a, another live well. This one's a little bit smaller, but this boat does have two live wells which is a pretty good amount for a guy that doesn't keep a ton of fish. But we have filled up at least one of them at a time. And another thing about these live wells is that is a light down there. So if you're out fishing at night, kind of want to see what you got in the live well, you turn that light on. And up here, uh, this is all my uh, boating stuff, I suppose. So I got this rope with a carabiner. That's the one I used to tie off the boat with. Got some bumpers. Hopefully you guys can see. And I got a paddle. This paddle here extends. Hopefully I never need that, but you never know. And what else do I got down there? And I got some extra, and I got some extra rope because you could always use more rope. Throw this guy back in there. Hopefully my camo work isn't too shoddy. Then this guy right here, this is the YOLO Tech camera mount. So what this does is it uses your nav light port and it powers this. So you can use the boat to power, power your GoPros. So I don't have to worry about power banks. As long as the crank battery has juice, I can power my GoPros with it. It's got like different connections. You can plug in different stuff to it. And it's been pretty handy. It's pretty cool and it's pretty sturdy. It doesn't look like it, but I've gone full plane with with this thing, you know, holding steady. It hasn't hasn't flown out yet. So this compartment here, not a whole lot going on. You got a throwable in there and a first aid kit because you never know. And just in case. So not much going on there. This one, it's got, you know, some life jackets. 
Yeah, so in the here I got four life jackets. Then down in here, got my three bank charger. So that charger charges my trolling motor batteries, which is two lie time lithium iron phosphate 12 volt 100 amp hour batteries. Wow, that was a mouthful. And then it charges that little Roy Poi back there that powers my main head unit back there. And if, if I remember correctly, yeah, so it's a three bank charger, so I charge three batteries at once at 10 amps per hour or whatever, at 10 amps. Yeah, I mean, it's been working pretty good. I don't have the cranking battery hooked up to a uh, charger or anything because I'll just use the gas motor alternator to charge that battery. All right, on to the next compartment. Yeah, lots of good compartments. Okay, so this one I got, huh, what is that? I got an extra towel. My buddy Matt's life scope pole. So he's got his Garmin set up on a shuttle like mine. So he brings that on here and he mounts his pole to this right here. Another cradle for my 10 inch Garmin back there because it uh, has some issues with networking. I showed you guys earlier that my two screens were networked together. Well, for some reason, after two days, it stopped working. They sent me a new one. That alleviated the problem for a couple more days. And then they stopped talking to each other again, put back on the old one, and then it started working. And I haven't had a problem since. And I've also been unplugging the network cable every time. So I don't know what's going on there. So now my original cradle works, and I'm not sure if this one works. What else do I got? Matt's, uh, that. That's what it's for. Uh, arm. Arm. Ramball arm. There you go. What else? We got a little bag for garbage. Some wet wipes because you never know then my pedal for the trova sits in here too there's not really a science behind why stuff is where it's at uh, i kind of just threw stuff wherever and, and then that's just where where they became home for those for those things and then so for this guy the big compartment we got rod locker so this rod locker can fit eight foot rods at max so all my rods fit in here. Uh, my longest rods are seven and a half foot, the whisker seekers. And everything fits. And underneath there, don't want to dig all my rods and stuff out, but my two 100 amp hour 12 volt light time batteries are housed down there. Those batteries, so my, bu my buddy Jeff, uh, his brother used this brand for like a year and never had any issues. So he ended up picking up one off of Amazon and he hasn't had any issues. That's what made me decide to go with that brand. It's a, it's an Amazon brand. I'm guessing it's made in China. I think all lithium batteries are made in China actually. So instead of going with the big brands, I decided to go with, with some stuff that's reviewed pretty good on Amazon. And I know at least one person who also knows another person that, you know, been using them for a year and they haven't had any issues. And so far for the month that I've had them, uh, I haven't had any issues either. And the thing about these batteries is they're like less than half of the big brands. So I bought two of these batteries for less than the price of one of the bigger brands. So if you guys are interested, I'll link those down there below too. All right, moving on. There's one more compartment left. Okay, so last but not least, this is the last rod locker. So this boat has two rod lockers. I'm not sure how big of rods you can fit in here, but I fit in seven foot rods in there, no problem. The whisker, the whisker seeker catfish and carp rods, they're seven feet long and I can stick them pretty far in there. So I'm guessing, they, it might be seven and a half foot max for this rod locker, but this is like the main one. Since right here, I like to put all the rods that I use all the time right here because they're easy for me to reach. You know, what else do I got in there? Oh, I got some you know, document stuff. I think my insurance stuff is in there. The uh, nav light is right there. Oh yeah, I forgot. There's a little cubby underneath the trolling motor. There's uh, the nav light wait that's the nav light this is the what's that light called boat lights so one in one in here one up there anyways guys yeah that's my boat uh, am i happy with the boat i would say yes overall 
Um, when I first got the tiller, I wasn't sure if that was the right move when I first started taking the boat out because you know tillers are a little bit different. There's a learning curve there compared to a steering wheel. You know it's intuitive, easy to uh, easy to pick up because well you drive a car it has a steering wheel so there isn't really much of a learning curve there. But with the tiller, there's a slight learning curve, and I was like, man, was this a good idea? But after using it for a month or so. I think I made the right choice because I like sitting back here. You know, I got my screen there, got that screen there or wherever I can put it. And then just sitting back here, I can fish from back here. I usually have been having a bunch of people out with me, you know, at least one or two people. And they got all that room, you know, all that room is for people that hop on the boat with me. I'm usually always back here. So overall, I'm pretty happy with, with uh, my purchase. Everything wasn't perfect though. So when I first got the boat, and I don't know whose fault this would be, I don't know if it was the dealer or the manufacturer like of the boat, like Illumicraft or Mercury's fault, but basically when I first got the boat, breaking in the motor, I could not get it on plane. You know, I'd slowly ramp up the revs, and then all of a sudden the revs would jump up really fast and it felt like the prop was out of the water so i was like catching air even though the motor was trimmed all the way down and i thought i was doing something wrong so i tried it for like two days and i eventually emailed the or i got a hold of the dealer and they said it probably got the wrong prop on there which i'm thinking like how does that even happen so i took it to the dealer they swapped out the prop the mechanic cody he came out with me to test it out and that's all it was it had the wrong prop and the first prop that he switched to it, it was kind of bouncing off the rev range on top a little bit so he stepped up into a bigger diameter and higher pitch i think i think that's what he said yeah sorry but anyways basically at the end of the day the first prop that was put on there was too small and had too high of a pitch and they ended up switching it out to a bigger diameter lower pitch so I've been able to get on plane no problem now. I mean, it was kind of a big issue, but kind of not because it got addressed and I'm good to go now. Oh yeah, the uh, <laughs> it's got a few cup holders around, but this one wasn't very secure and it kind of went bye-bye. I also talked to the dealer about that. They said they got one ordered for me, so I should be getting a new one. So there's a few minor things that uh, weren't perfect but they all got addressed and I, had, I hadn't had to pay any extra money so that works out pretty good okay guys there is my first boat video i hope you guys enjoyed the boat there was a lot of stuff to learn since i got this boat especially like backing up so before getting this boat i had basically had no experience other than borrowing one of my buddy's boats sean saki fishings i borrowed his boat and you know we launched and trailered all on our own so that was kind of like the first spark that kind of got things going for me i was like okay i think i can do this and now look at me sitting here as a boat owner solo that was the first time launching my boat by myself and being out here by myself actually was today because every other time i've had people with me so i've always had some help but now today was all on my own i don't know i'm glad i'm happy not happy about truck gas but uh comes with the territory right anyways guys if you guys liked it give it a like if you want to see more hit that subscribe button let me know if i missed anything which I probably did, but other than that, catch you guys later.